Walking is super complicated. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you over 50 causes of problems with walking in folks that have MS. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we see people impacted by MS from around the globe, both in office and on telemedicine. If you'd like to talk to us about scheduling a consult, call the number listed below. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about a very, very complex task, walking. And in reality, there are innumerate reasons why someone impacted by MS could have difficulties with walking. In this video, I'm gonna review with you over 50 causes of problems with walking and what we can do to make it better. So let's jump in. For starters, untreated MS or undertreated MS has been shown in clinical trials to lead to problems with walking, both in the timed 25 foot walk and in the ability to walk without assistance device. If you're impacted by MS, whether that be a relapsing or a progressive form, you need to be on a therapy not just to slow the disease down in general, but also to keep you up and moving around to help with walking. There are a bunch of visual problems that people with MS can experience, which interfere with their ability to walk safely. For starters, some people with MS have double vision. Our vision is set up so that when you look left, the eyes are yoked and they both look left together, binocular vision. If there's damage to the circuits of the brain that control that, the eyes can become unyoked, so when you look left, only one eye looks, and now you're seeing double, and that can make it really hard to perceive your environment, and it can lead to a fall. Similarly, optic neuritis can take out vision in one eye, or make the vision in one eye really, really poor so that you can't see very well, and that's another risk for falling. Also, people that have had visual damage from MS oftentimes experience difficulty with night vision. The part of the vision that it helps them navigate in dark light has been impaired, and so they may have difficulty walking safely at night, but not during the day. Walking is complicated, controlled by the noggin, and there are plenty of cognitive-related issues which can lead to difficulties with ambulation. I talk a lot on this channel about the concept of cog fog, where people have trouble putting thoughts together. And you can imagine, when you're trying to walk across an area, there's a lot of cognitive involvement. To be more granular, people with MS sometimes have difficulties with executive functioning. That's stuff like motor planning, planning out how you're going to walk, or trying to walk and think about something at the same time. Sometimes people have difficulty with multitasking while walking. So they're fine walking if they're doing nothing else, but if they're literally walking and chewing gum, or walking and talking, or walking and carrying something, then they may find that they don't walk so well and that they're at risk of falling or stumbling. There are a host of medications that can impair cognition. They can lead to unsteady gait. They can lead to lightheadedness. They can lead to confusion or sedation. I'm talking about side effects of medicines that doctors give you, which ultimately can result in problems with walking beta interferons. So the shots that we take for MS can cause flu-like symptoms. That can heat up your core body temperature and it's not uncommon that someone, say, on Avidex may tell me that they have trouble walking the weekend after their shot. I want to talk about alcohol. It's a recreational drug that many people use, but it can impair the cerebellum, the coordination centers of the brain. We can't forget pathologic fatigue. I'm not talking about motor fatigue. I'll get to that in a second. I mean being absolutely exhausted. And sometimes we feel almost couch-locked with our degree of fatigue. People with MS are at higher risk to experience seizures. And there is a kind of seizure called a complex partial seizure, where someone is not passed out on the ground, they're just super confused, and they, they really aren't aware of what's going on. But sometimes these people are up and moving, and that's a huge fall risk. There's a bunch of different patterns of weakness, which can make someone have difficulty in ambulating. For starters, let's consider foot drop. If you can't lift your foot up, you can't clear the ground. And so the turf monster grabs your foot, and you fall over. In a different way, if you have hip weakness, you can't pick your leg up. You can't initiate getting your leg off the ground. And so it changes your gait mechanics. It makes you hip hike. It makes you have to swing your leg around. It stands to reason that if your quadricep is weak, you're gonna have trouble extending out your leg. Or if your hamstring is weak, you're gonna have trouble pulling your leg back. 
All of these muscles are very important to the mechanics of walking. And if you have weakness of any one of them, it can interfere with your walking. Motor fatigue is a common cause of difficulties with walking distances in MS. Someone tells me, my legs aren't weak, I'm fine. But once I start walking, after I get going for a while, my legs become weak and I have to stop. Similarly, heat sensitivity is a monster. And oftentimes people tell me, I have no problems walking in the winter, but in August, I really, really struggle. Along the same lines, deconditioning and inactivity leads to difficulties with walking. And all too often, we find that our patients become deconditioned and we send them to physical therapy to beef them back up. It bears mentioning that obesity is a problem for walking and that's a physics comment. If you're carrying 50 extra pounds and your leg is weak, that weak leg has to handle that 50 extra pounds. If you shed that weight, that weak leg is still weak, but it has a lot less to carry, and so it makes it easier to move around safely. Orthopedic concerns can interfere with walking in MS, but it's an indirect phenomenon. MS in and of itself does not damage the joints, but if you have weakness or other problems which change the way that you walk, you're putting stress on your joints in ways that they're not normally able to handle and over time you can wear the joints out. So sometimes we'll see people that develop knee damage or hip damage from walking kind of uh, incorrectly, if you will. Similarly, there can be problems with shoulder injuries like rotator cuff tears or elbow injuries that can make it difficult to walk if you need to use a cane or a walker. And so someone that's depending upon their upper extremities to help them walk safely using an assist device can find themselves stymied if their upper extremity becomes damaged somehow. Along the same lines, as someone who uses a walker that has weakness of their hand or weakness of their arms may find that they're no longer able to ambulate. Sometimes we can have trouble walking because we're using an inappropriate device. For example, there are people that need to be using a walker, but they don't, they just use one cane and that's not providing adequate stabilization. They're not safe in all different directions and they're at risk of falling. Spasticity is a monster and people impacted by MS can have spasticity in a number of different places which all lead to problems with walking. If you have a spastic calf, you can't adequately pull your foot up. That changes your gait mechanics. Similarly, if your quadricep is tight, it's hard to bend your leg back or if your hamstring is tight, it's hard to extend your leg. Another manifestation of spasticity is cramps, like a painful charley horse. And someone can be walking along and have a cramp in their back or their butt or their hamstring and bam, they go to ground because it hurts so darn bad and their leg is curled up. Even spasms and cramps of your toes curling up in your shoes can make it hard to place your foot on the ground and cause problems with walking. Other complications of spasticity include contracture, because the leg is held in a particular position for a certain amount of time, the tendons actually become shorter, and now the leg cannot extend fully, and so contracture can lead to problems with walking. Also, if your leg is held in a certain position, you put pressure on unusual areas, and people can develop heel ulcers or foot ulcers, and these ulcers can make it impossible to put pressure on your foot, making it impossible to walk. Spasticity is typically worse in the winter, and I live in Columbus, Ohio, where we have quite a cold winter. A big part of walking is coordination, and the cerebellum in the back of the brain and all of its connections are responsible for helping with coordination and balance. You can have problems with balance that only affect the core, the middle of your body, and so you can be unsteady. Or you can have problems with coordinating the movements of your legs. And so you can have trouble in placing your legs, particularly if you have to walk in a narrow space. Vertigo is a phenomenon. It's a hallucination of spinning. The gyroscopes in the inner ear controlled by the brain can be impacted by MS. And so someone can have trouble walking because they feel like they're spinning on a merry-go-round. Sometimes people can experience lightheadedness. Now, oftentimes that's not caused by MS, but I see it all the time in folks impacted by MS. And lightheadedness obviously impacts walking safety. It's hard to walk if you can't feel your feet. And there's a lot of problems with sensation that can occur in the setting of MS. So if you have numbness of your leg, you may place your foot and not know where it is in space. You can actually lose what we call proprioception, and that's the understanding of the joint angle, like where your leg or your arm is in space. And so you may have your leg in a weird position and not realize it. Obviously, that can lead to a fall. Neuropathic pain is something that I discuss a lot on this channel. 
and there's a host of kind of painful sensations that can obviously interfere with walking. Lermite's phenomenon is an experience where you bend your neck and you feel a zap of electricity down your back into your feet. And I've had patients describe to me, they'll be walking and look down and zap and they fall because they feel like they've been electrocuted. Peripheral neuropathy is actually not something we see in MS. It's where the nerves that provide sensation to the legs can become impaired. And this is all too common in comorbid conditions like diabetes or thyroid problems, etc. Bowel and bladder function actually impact walking. If you're super constipated and literally full of stool, that can make your spasticity actually much worse. And if you are incontinent of stool, if you have accidents, some people, they refuse to leave their house and they're simply not going to walk around. God forbid they have an accident. Same thing with bladder control. People may choose not to walk around or go places because they don't want to be far away from a bathroom. Infections can cause problems with walking. If you have a urinary tract infection or an upper respiratory tract infection or even a tooth infection, that can raise your core body temperature, it can short circuit out your spinal cord, and it may manifest as problems with getting out of bed or walking. You may not even know that you're infected. We call that an occult infection. When one of my patients has problems with walking, the first thing I do is I check for an infection. Let's also consider the environment we walk in. Sometimes our environments aren't very kind and there can be barriers like stairs or a bar they have to climb over or no railing or something like that. Here in Ohio, in the winter, we have snow and we have ice. There can be uneven ground. Low light areas are very challenging. And sometimes patients tell me in areas with excessive noise and lights, they become disoriented and it's hard for them to walk safely. Which causes of problems with walking have I left out? Please leave them in the comments section below. My name is Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, be safe and take care.